this whole coalition has been doing so much work. Um, it's been so impressive. It's made a real difference. And for months, you know, we have been pushing for a ceasefire and the conversation in Washington, D.C. has dramatically changed. Really? You know, folks were telling us that we're not going to get 20 people calling for ceasefire right after October 7. But here we are collectively, we've been able to get 85 members of Congress. That also includes Rep. Clark. Rep. Adam Smith, Rep. Uh, Andy Kim, uh, Rep. Crow. So we've get, we're now pushing into centrist, uh, you know, Democrats, more moderates, and I think we should all be really proud of that. But obviously, more needs to be done. Um, and I think uh, many of you maybe you know saw that I was in the Middle East. I spent some time in the Middle East. I wanted to frame some of this conversation in that trip and what I learned. Um, I got three takeaways. One, children are begging us for a ceasefire. I met with children at the Ramallah Friends School and I was absolutely heartbroken. About half a dozen kids cried to me, whether it was one-on-one -on -one or in front of their, their peers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're looking to us uh, to, to do more. And especially, you know, they're concerned that uh, humanitarian law applies for some children, but not others. And so Palestinian children are counting on us to, to do more. Yeah. Um, number two is my other takeaway was how incredibly important humanitarian work is. Um, and especially the work of UNRWA, which is the backbone of all humanitarian aid operations in Gaza. I think those staffers are absolute heroes. Uh, they don't get enough credit. They are doing incredible work under duress, uh, putting their lives on the line in Gaza, but also in Jerusalem, in the West Bank. Settler activity is just uh, getting more and more hostile. So we need to do better by UNRWA and restore funding. And the other takeaway yes. is that Palestinians are following U.S. advocacy efforts. Uh, people on the ground were telling me, you know, wow you, you all for you you know you forced a vote uh you know to you know scrutinize israeli uh you know human rights and and u.s complicity in human rights violations wow um they said your you know your grassroots activism all the rallies and marches that's getting back to palestinians you know all over the west bank and also a lot of israeli human rights activists who are not represented by this very extreme right-wing government so I heard from Palestinians and Israelis alike how much our work matters. So as far as the lobby asks, because that's why you all uh, invited me to come speak, um, it's very simple. We're going to keep it as simple as possible. I promised Kevin that I would keep it simple. Um, one is we need more members of Congress calling for a ceasefire. Very, you know, it could be a, for a whole number of different reasons or, you, you know, uh, we, we need a ceasefire to get the hostages out. We need a ceasefire to protect civilians, those of the 1 million Palestinian children living in Gaza, uh, the hostages, but also everybody in the region. We need a ceasefire to get aid access into all parts of Gaza, not just Rafa, but literally all parts. Uh, we, we need a ceasefire to prevent regional escalation. So while you're doing your lobby visits and your outreach, try to touch on all these notes because you know it all matters. And last but not least, we need a ceasefire to stop the spread of hate in the form of anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and anti-Arab racism. So we would love your help with that. And I know that's one of your key asks. Okay, number two, I wanted to give some framing around this. Uh, we don't want to see a single bullet, a single bomb sold to Israel at this point. It's just too much. We know what they're going to do with it. Any more weapon sales sends a message of impunity to the Israeli government as they're committing war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and what the ICJ is warning could be genocide. Um, so this is absolutely not the time to be sending more weapons. Uh, Unfortunately, the administration hasn't gotten the memo. They've approved billions more. Uh, just in the past few weeks, we're seeing F-35s, F-15 warplanes, 2,000 pound bombs, direct attack munitions, uh, and all of these are fueling the conflict. So 
what we need to do is get members of Congress back in the driver's seat and to say no more weapons of war that will just keep this war going more and more, um, you know, off the rails. So, you know, just one caveat, while we definitely, you know, want to say no, I wanted to flag that Speaker Johnson has said that he is getting ready to get the Ukraine aid money going along possibly with the Israeli, uh, the Israel money. So you might see from the House, uh, you know, for a while there, we weren't sure that the Republicans wanted to move the Ukraine aid. And that was, um, you know, that was something that the Democrats really wanted under Biden's leadership to kind of package uh, the Israel and Ukraine funds. Now it seems like there's a, a breakthrough on that in the House. So we, your, your lobbying on Capitol Hill is really important. And we got to say no new weapons. If you're having some trouble with your member of Congress, what I've found is really helpful is to frame it in, you know, we need to enforce U.S. law, like the Foreign Assistance Act, which says we cannot uh, be giving arms to countries that are, that's blocking U.S. humanitarian assistance. Uh, we can't be giving arms to units that are violating uh, fundamental human rights of Palestinians in Gaza. So enforce U.S. law, block U.S. weapons. And I just feel like that framing can be really helpful, especially if you have a more conservative member um, who is, um, you know, not maybe ready to come right out and say it, but if, if you can say that we're, we're trying to enforce U.S. law, I've actually found that to be really helpful in, in my meetings. Um, okay, last but not least, UNRWA restoration. Uh, you know, just if I could briefly, there was this UNRWA staffer that I met while I was in Palestine that really just just showed how much, you know, these folks care about children and families living in occupied, occupied territory. This woman, Nisreen, she told me this story uh, where she and her colleagues got 50 kids out of Gaza by one by one calling the embassies of Turkey, Egypt, Qatar, Jordan, and the list goes on and was able to evacuate these kids in critical condition with, uh, you know, with third degree burns, with amputated limbs. I mean, this is really horrific stuff. She told me that there's a hospital in Florida that they can get these kids to, but the kids are too afraid to come to the United States uh, because of U.S. complicity in this war. And I think every American should be concerned and ashamed by that but also said to me that we need to do better for UNRWA and you know, cutting off UNRWA funds means that Nisreen can't do her important work supporting the, uh, the children of Palestine. So we got more to do. And, and folks may have seen that uh, there was allegations that 12 of the 30,000 uh, UNRWA staffers in the territory allegedly uh, you know, were participating in the October 7 attacks the, the Biden administration, despite UNRWA, um, you know, terminating the contracts of those employees, opening up an independent investigation and completely, you know, uh, saying we are ready for accountability. We just want to get our aid operation back underway. The administration cut off all funds to UNRWA. Absolutely tragic. Uh, but since that decision, we've seen Canada. Finland, the EU, Sweden, Japan just restored funding, Australia just restored funding. So it seems like the rest of the world is saying, let's restore funding, where the administration and Congress cut off funding. So luckily, we still have agency over this. Um, there's a handful of members, uh, Rep Carson, Raskin, and Jayapal are right about to introduce the UNRWA Restoration Act. And I think this would be a fantastic ask for people, um, you know, as you're lobbying your members, uh, you know, for ceasefire, for no weapons, but also say UNRWA is the backbone of all aid operations. You know, yes, we should have transparency. We should have accountability. We should hold people accountable that participated in October 7, um, if that's true. But at the same time, we should not throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak and completely shut down all, you know, the backbone of aid operations in Gaza and along with it, aid operations in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, which would only destabilize the region further. Um, there's more to say. 
uh, I am so grateful for all the advocacy going on. I'm so grateful, uh, you know, for you and what you've done in, in under such really hard times. I tell you, it makes this guy feel a lot less alone, knowing that there's such a huge community out there working on this um, in solidarity. And with that, I can pass it back to Miriam.